Welcome back everyone. As you know, Adobe XD seems to be on the way out, and well, Figma seems to be the next best thing. Before starting Figma wireframe, make simple low file wireframes with basic elements, with no color, use minimal text for titles and headers, or use thin gray rectangles. For images and icon, stick to black, white, or gray geometric shapes. This speeds up the Figma wireframe process. Now, if you are creating a high fi prototype, then that's a different story. Figma works on all computers, including Mac, PC, and Linux, as well as in web browsers. I prefer the desktop app because it works offline. However, for this tutorial, I'll use the online version, since many of you will likely be using that. This tutorial aims to get you up to speed with Figma tools. I use this as a visual reference for the desired final product. Typically, you'd create a wireframe based on your ideas, not the reverse. When you first open Figma, it will take you to the home dashboard. It will show recent files, teams, and drafts, and you also have the option to create a new design file, big jam board, or import a file into Figma. To create a new file, click on the plus design file in the blue button located in the far right hand corner. This action will open a fresh empty file, which will be automatically categorized under drafts. On the left side under layers, you'll find all the items available for your canvas. On the right side, Consider this your property section, where you can adjust elements within your layers. In the top left corner, you access the menu items. To access frames, simply click the hashtag icon or press F on your keyboard. On the right, you'll find a list of various phone sizes, tablets, and desktop, along with other templates. Let's choose an iPhone size. While the top center offers tools for adding components, editing objects, and creating masks. Once selected, a new frame will appear on your canvas. To rename it, double click either on the left or the top of the new frame. Enter a new name and press enter to apply for the change. I often overlook this step, but it's important to use a layout grid. Reselect the frame and on the right hand side, click layout grid. This action will reveal additional option. Choose the bento box icon or the nine squares. A pop-up will appear, followed by a grid drop down menu. Select grid here. You can adjust the columns. I typically use stretch, but you can input custom sizes as well. Afterward, close the pop up with the X button. To temporarily hide the layout, click the eye icon. To re enable it, simply click the close eye icon. I'll start by dragging and dropping my mobile design screenshot into Figma. Next, I'll place this screenshot inside the frame and adjust its size to match the frame's dimensions. To maintain the ratio while resizing, remember to hold the shift key on your keyboard. If the frame height is too small and the mask is covering things, I resize the frame. I typically click on the frame's name to reselect it from the layers on the left. Then I can manually adjust the frame's height or I can double click the image to obtain its height. After that, I reselect the frame, go to the height attribute, either paste the number or enter to resize it accordingly. Now, I relocate the image from within the frame and position it to the left or right serving as my reference point. Let's begin recreating the wireframe from the screenshot. To start, add a rectangle to the page to represent the most prominent component, which is the image at the top. If the size doesn't appear correct, feel free to adjust any of the edges or angles. Figma, like many apps, includes smart guides, which are incredibly useful. Using the selection tool, position this box on the home page. To center it with the frame, move it until you see a red alignment tool. To add text, click the T icon or press T on your keyboard and enter your headers. To expedite the process, I often duplicate an existing text box or use a thin rectangle as placeholder. Streaming wireframes speeds things up. Many other elements on this page can be represented using rectangles. For instance, we can use a rectangle to depict the navigation bar at the top of the page. You can either choose a square tool or simply press R on your keyboard to create another rectangle. Place this rectangle right on top of the image. To adjust the spacing between them, click the plus icon within the auto layout and modify the vertical cap spacing there.
To display social media icons, you can opt for a circle shape or transform a rectangle into a circle by adjusting its corner radius. You can also use a thin rectangle to signify the drop down menu and another one for logos. If you prefer plugins, you can search for Iconify, install it, and look for a hamburger menu or drop down menu icon. You've witnessed how I utilize Figma tools for wireframe. I stick to a monochrome palette, just black, white, and gray. Tech is sparingly used for headers or titles. Otherwise, I employ text boxes or rectangle boxes. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please like it and subscribe to get more tips and tricks. Thanks for watching.